<laughs> Welcome to A Regenerative Future with Matt Powers. I'm your host, Matt Powers. This is a podcast where we talk about solutions, real regenerative solutions that you can apply today, that you can apply tomorrow, and they will work. They will serve you. They will help you to heal yourself, your environment, and the planet. These are solutions that are home scale. These are business scale. I'm talking to scientists and experts all over the world. This is something that you can make part of your life today. So let's dive into it. This week we're all talking about soil all across the internet. I've seen it. It is it, it is a groundswell event right now happening on the internet. I don't know if you've tuned in and seen this. And what's so unbelievable is right now, that's what I'm focused on because in a week from now, I am releasing Permaculture, Soil, Science, and Solutions, the book and online course. It's gonna be a Kickstarter, it's the whole deal. I'm so excited about it. And the crazy thing is, that same night, I'm opening for the keynote at Soil Not Oil in San Francisco, in downtown San Francisco. And then later that month, I'm doing a soil in-depth teaching with Quatamoc Via at the Sonoma Ecology Center. I'm going to be sharing everything that I know about soil in this new book, in this new course. And I'm gonna be studying and working with experts to go even further and expanding upon what I know because there's actually a lot of questions that I have. Um, there's a lot of uh, caveats, there's a lot of exceptions, there's a lot of uh, contradictions and, and things that shouldn't work that are working. Um, and I wanna know why, I wanna know how we can apply these things in our lives to make things easier, make things faster, make things stronger, make things better. And at the same time, um, build more meaning and purpose in our lives so that these things stick, they become part of our culture, part of our habit for our benefit, for our generational benefit. So that's where I'm really coming from with all this stuff. So I'll be talking all week about the amazing pathways, solutions, science, and skills around soil so that you can get inspired, so that you can see what's possible, and you can join us in the amazing Kickstarter that's starting a week from now. And you could start participating in this amazing upwelling that is happening all across the internet, all across the world, as we come to realize that soil is the linchpin in climate restoration, because it is, and it will be, and it is the linchpin in our health. It is the linchpin in all ecosystemic environmental health as well, all biodiversity, all life, all of our systems rely and, and, and tie into our soils cycles. So that is something I want. I just really want to drill down deep into and get people really excited about and get people really involved in because it is the linchpin. It is the turning point. It is the key. So let's talk about it. <laughs> so aerobic versus anaerobic. What's the deal? Ooh, what's that smell? It's putrid. It's revolting. It's anaerobic. That means lacking oxygen. And the stink is there to warn you. Our senses are there to warn us of danger. So why is it dangerous, you might ask? Well, it's because anaerobic environments are commonly rife with parasites and pathogens. But enough about the sad side of things. What's good? Do you remember the fresh, rich smell of soil? Not dirt, not sand but rich, black, loamy garden soil that's homemade and DIY. Oh, it smells fresh and earthy, even like a forest. Or have you ever smelled a perfect hot compost heap? No stink, no hint of anaerobic activity. That amazing smell of the forest, that Shinrin Yoku forest bathing experience can happen in the waste from your home. So why is it a thing? Some folks are like, aerobic only. Likely because they learned with my soil mentor, Dr. Lane Ingham, who I've worked with one-on-one -on -one for the past five years. But other folks are like, anaerobic is easier and faster and it works. So which is true? Which is safe? What's effective? And what's best? So three days at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for compost is the standard in the US for safety. And it's far from being like turned into good compost or soil at that point. It's really hot, extremely hot at this point. And the most important thing to know is it's not sterile. 
I mean, even myself, I've used that word at different times early on, talking about how we sterilize the soil when we bring it up to that temperature. We're actually not doing that. We're not pasteurizing it. We're not um, sterilizing it. Um, it's, it's not that high of a temperature. In fact, um, it's teeming with life. Uh, there is fungi in there. I know you might read the human or handbook and they might say there's only bacteria there. It's not true. There's thermophilic fungi too. Um, so it's this composting that actually selects for aerobic life. So it actually becomes inhospitable to anaerobes. So it's, it's really the reverse of sterilization. It's a selection of a certain environmental condition that selects for that life. So the thermophilic population then gradually recedes, they dissipate, they go with the heat. And then, because thermophiles, heat lovers, right? Um, and then those, aer those aerobes that come into that pile, those aerobic microbes that populate the pile afterwards are safe. And as Dr. Elaine Ingham says, you can lick your fingers after touching good compost. Um, and so this is fully cooled compost I'm talking about. Please do not go out and lick and eat your compost. Um, until you have you know what good compost is, until you know what safety is, because it needs to go through a heating process and a turning process. It must stay between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit for five turns in 15 days, at least five turns. Um, and that selects for only aerobic microbes. This is why we aerate our fish tanks. This is why we keep water moving to avoid stagnation. I mean, you've been to that stinky stagnant pond or those tidal pools that are still and, and, and nasty. Um, and it's even why our bodies have to be active and get oxygen into our system to run properly. I mean, like this is why we work out. It's this oxygenation aeration that is a, a, a hallmark, a cornerstone of biological health on this planet. And we're really lucky that it works this way so that we could have this reset component in our system. So given all this, why are people advocating for anaerobic processes? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. I've come to learn in my research and work, things are more complicated. So most folks talk about anaerobic soil and they talk about hacks and about how they can do it really fast, how you can just you know flip things over, you can just put things in a bucket and close it up and then uh, a year later or something like that, you can use it. But most of these things are actually facultative microbes. These bold little guys are everywhere and they're, they don't care if there's oxygen or there's no oxygen, they find a way and they aren't so foreign, they aren't so exotic. I mean, these are things that we know yeast ferments you know like you're making your pickles uh in the amazon rainforest so you know those waterlogged soils in the r amazon rainforest they're lacking oxygen so you need facultative microbes to facilitate action there and actually in disturbed rainforest um you'll find nodulation happening where they're creating an anaerobic area separate from oxygen and then in undisturbed forests, there are no nodulations from the same trees because they have freely associating facultative microbes because the environment itself is both aerobic and anaerobic in turns. So it's these amazing performers that most people are talking about. These, these are everywhere, these are useful, and many of them are edible and safe. So there are some folks using stinky anaerobic ferments, and there's a whole host of uncertainties and, and, and dangers associated with these pathways, especially if we don't have facultative microbes ready or a way to aerate things afterwards to flip the biology back to aerobic. So if we can bring things back to aerobic, in other words, or ferment them, we can protect ourselves, our plants, and the soil life. A major benefit of hot composting is you take stinky things and make them safe and turn them into readily beneficial compost. So even if you're doing anaerobic preps, you could turn them into something beneficial later. And inevitably, even if you put it in the soil and you just dump it on the soil, it'll eventually become aerobic by being there in the soil environment because healthy soils are aerobic and it will head towards that. It'll, the life will work towards that, but you still run the risk of encountering pathogens, parasites and disease causing bacteria. You could hurt your plants, you could hurt yourself. Um, it's definitely not safe, uh, safe place for like kids or OSHA or, or me or you. And you could imbalance the pH, you could shock your plants, harm your soil food web, all of the cost of nutrients. Um, and that, that's what it really is, right? That it's so easy part has its caveats, right? You know, the stink. 
that's the loss of nutrients. That ammonia could have been ammonium and helped your plants fruit, but no, no, no. So aerobic or anaerobic, it's not that simple. Even in healthy soil environments, the plants and soil life create spots of higher and lower pH, higher and lower concentrations of oxygen, even anaerobic. That's how nitrogen fixation works. That's what I mentioned with the nodulations, right? But it's their choice, they did it, and it's sophisticated. It changes every micrometer, every root hair, every plant. It's all over the charts, across the spectrum. So we can't arrange that, design that, or install that. But the healthy, living, aerobic soil, with that, they can create that level of sophistication, diversity, and stability, and they install it. It's all them, it's all their choices. It's autonomous and it's a relationship. You're, you're providing the materials to create those things to, to, to facilitate that, that action. So this really wasn't an anaerobic attack video. We're all still friends on Facebook. Wait a second. Uh oh, click, click. <laughs> this video was more like a disarmament of the militarization of aerobic only, which I think actually is leading to even more anaerobic experiments to prove them wrong. So I'm not trying to feed anything into that fire. I hope I'm just showcasing the elegant complexity and context that this debate really actually sits on. All right, everyone. So stay tuned for more permaculture soil science and solutions as we prepare for the Kickstarter for the book and course launch. I'll be opening for the keynote that Monday night at Soil Not Oil in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, talking about how soil is the key to climate restoration. I'm going to live stream that if I can and film it for higher quality version later on. So tune in for that. Stay tuned. Get ready. And thank you so much for listening, for getting excited about soil because it really is that, that, that turning point, that linchpin, that key that turns everything else around. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'm Matt Powers.